green off from. It's three meters higher than the green is. And there's the ball. It looks just like a soccer ball. And the ball is going to be uh, kicked from this height. And they're trying to get it onto the green. So the kick that they make, an initial height of three meters, it's going to be kicked at an angle of 30 degrees. And that initial vo velocity is going to be 26 meters per second. So let's go ahead and we can we can write our um, write our parametric equation for it. So we have an x component and a y component. And now the x component, remember, is uh, the left right motion. It's this way, and the the y component is the straight up. So we're breaking this this uh, direction, this force that's at an angle into two pieces, a left right piece and an up down piece. And we know that um, width is, is cosine. So we know that the x part is just going to be basically that times the cosine of 30 degrees. And we know that this upward component is going to be 26 times the sine of 30 degrees. So in the x direction, that's easy. It's, it's, just, it's just that. It's 26 times cosine of 30 degrees uh, times t, or t's time. Um, and then this direction, this upward direction, we have this direction where it's it's going up uh, that component per t. That's our initial upward component. Um, our initial upward component. We also know it started at a height of three meters, so we have that. But remember, gravity is a force that's going to be pulling down on this the whole time. So as soon as as we as we kick it, as soon as it gets kicked, it's going up with this. It's increasing by this, but gravity's pulling on it. it pulling it down. We're pulling on it the whole time, but it's decreasing its speed. And since this is in meters, we want to be careful about that. Gravity is going to pull it at, at 4.9, and that is going to be our t squared because it's acceler It's an acceleration as it's going down. So here is our um, here's our component. Here's our our parametric equation that shows this relationship. So now here's the question. If it's kicked like this, is it going to hit that green? Maybe not stay on it, maybe not roll on it. My question is just, is it going to bounce? Like when once it hits the ground, it's going to do it on the green. So what I can do is I can I could enter this into my um, calculator. There's a couple of uh, different things I could do, but I guess I'm curious about when is it going to hit the ground? In other words, when is the, the height going to be zero? Because initially the height's three. So what I can do is that's that's this component here. That's that's this y part. So I'm going to think about this negative four uh, point nine t squared plus twenty six sine of thirty t uh, plus three. I'm going to know when is that equal to zero. Well, that's just a quadratic, right? I have uh, my a my a is this negative four point nine. My b is twenty six sine thirty, and my c is three. So I could run that through quadratic equation, and that'll give me the time. So I'm just going to do that on my calculator. Uh, I'm just going to enter it on in. So I'm using my, my quadratic formula. I could do it by hand as well, which is fine. Um, but I am a lazy, lazy guy um, sometimes. So I get two answers, and one of them is negative. <laughs> I'm going to use the right pen. One of them is negative wow let's keep it really thick 0.213 and the other is about 2.866 uh, and it keeps going from there so knowing that that makes sense to me because it's going to be you know quadratic like this i don't know sure where it's going to hit the negative part like this is time zero here so if i if i run that parabola backwards that would when it if i just Follow what the parabola would be. That's when it hits. So the question is, uh, this happens at a certain time, but I, I'm not sure where it happens at. I just know when it happens. Uh, 2.866. So now, if I want to know where it happens in that direction, I'm going to use that x component. So I'm going to say uh, 26 times cosine of 30 at times t is 2.866. And I'm just going to enter that into my calculator as well. So 26 cosine 30, uh, close off the parentheses, make sure you close off the parentheses after the 30 times 2.866, 
and I get about 64.53. So if this is 50 meters here and this is only three meters long, it definitely happens later. So that shot will have overshot the green. So this person maybe uses a little less force or somehow figures out how to change that angle, maybe make it a little higher to make it hit. All right, so in this situation, uh, Scott here is throwing a snowball at, at Chucky. Chucky's standing out here in this field. He's about 55 feet away from him, and he does not think that Scott has the arm to get there. He knows Scott can aim well, so he can right, throw it in the right direction, but he doesn't think he has the arm. Uh, Scott launches it at a 60-degree angle. So this is 60 degrees right here. Um, he's, he lets it go five feet from the ground, and the initial velocity is 45 feet per second. All right, so let's write our equations for that. So we know that we can break this vector, this uh, initial force right here, into a horizontal component and a vertical component. So uh, we know that cosine is width. So this would be that velocity times the cosine part of it. And then the vertical piece is, again, that same, that initial velocity times the sine of the angle. So if we write our parametric equation for this, pretty straightforward. The x part is just that vertical, or that, sorry, horizontal movement. So that's uh, 45 times cosine of 60 degrees times time. It'll keep moving in that direction at that speed. Now the, uh, the vertical piece, we know that it is, it was, its initial upward movement is uh, 45 times sine of 60 degrees times time. We know it was thrown from a height of five feet, so five feet off the ground. But we know gravity's pulling down on it, and this is in feet, so our multiplier is negative 16 t squared. Um, because gravity is consistently pulling down at it, accelerating it down towards the ground. So what we want to know is, does he have enough arm? Does it? Does he overthrow? Does he underthrow? Or does it land here? So we could say. Um, like when is this y part equal to six, right? And then we could kind of fudge it from there. But how about we just see how long it takes for it to go 55 feet? So let's solve this x part equal to 55. So I have uh, 55 is equal to that 45 cos 60. Notice that 45 cos 60, that's just a number that's multiplied by t. So if I wanted to solve this, uh, for t, I could just divide both sides by this number, by this 45 cos 60. So 55 divided by 45 cos 60 degrees is equal to t. And I'm going to do that on my calculator. When you do that in your calculator, make sure that you go 55 divided by, put that whole denominator in parentheses. So 45 cos of 60. And make sure you're not in radians too. But... Um, Put it in parentheses that, so you divide by that whole value. So 55 divided by, in parentheses, 45 cos 60. I get 2.4 repeating. And not, it's not even approximate. It's exactly 2.4 repeating. So it takes that 2.444 or 4 ninths of a second to go this distance right here. So let me see what the height is at that time then. But now what I can do is take that and plug it in for t. So I'm going to go negative uh, 16. And my calculator, I'm just going to go answer squared um, plus 45 sine 60 uh, times the answer plus 5. And that should give me the height at that time. Plus 45 sine 60. Close off those parentheses. Um, times the answer plus five and I get about 4.66 feet so that actually looks like ah, probably hits him right in the chest about so boom yeah it's actually a very good shot not quite a headshot but gets him in the chest so yeah he will hit him as long as he doesn't you know, some have some sort of left right sway if he can throw it in the right direction with that force it will hit Chucky right in the chest. That poor kid, I don't know why Scott 